Greetings. I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos Double Fisted Product Review. The EcoFlow R600 is the talk of the town nowadays. I know many of you have been eagerly anticipating this review video. Unfortunately, it came weeks later than I'd hoped because my initial Alpha Model R600 failed in the very beginning of my tests, and I really didn't have enough viable footage to make a compelling video. Fast forward a full month later, and we now have a fresh pair of EcoFlow R600 Max beta test models that we can check out and see if these things really live up to their hype, and if you should be an early adopter, or if you should wait for retail. Let's find out. So it comes in the box of the dual R600 Max. Now this is one of the package deals you can get on the Kickstarter where you can get two of these for one lower price. And it comes with the two modular batteries, the two base R600s, and this big fat pile of cables. So let's go over the cables. As you can see, they have these beautiful beta test only printed all over the power stations to make it absolutely clear that these are beta tests only. The first set of cables we have are these parallel cables. Now what you do is you plug these in just like this and then on this side you plug them in just like this. And I don't think it matters if you mix up the colors or not, at least it didn't matter to me. Now what this does is it allows both of these guys to talk to each other and share inverter power. It also comes with one solar to XT60 connector, two solar XT60 connectors, and then it comes with one 12 volt accessory for your vehicle to XT60, and two 12 volt accessory to XT60 connectors. There's no manual because this is a beta product. They don't have the manuals printed out yet, so there's nothing I can go over for the manual. But let's take a closer look now. The R600 does come with an app that works with Android or Apple devices. And once you have it set up, which I'm gonna do that in a separate video, it's a little bit on the convoluted side. Once you get it set up, you can just pull up your device. You can see the current operating temperature, which should update here. Oh, of course not. Software connection aborted. Let's try that again. Oh, come on, seriously? You can see the current temperature of the device, the capacity, time to empty. You can actually turn on the inverter and even the light. You can change the frequency or the X boost feature. You can change how much the battery you want to recharge. So you only want to recharge it to 90% to extend the life of the battery. That's a cool feature. You can change the colors of the LED on the front. You can change the mood lighting and make it like a night light. You can change the kind of effects. You can even change the brightness of the light. In the system menu, you can adjust how long do you want it to stand by? You can set it to never. If you think want this thing to like never shut off, you can set it to never. If you want it to shut off quickly, you can set it to 30 minutes. I don't think the LCD standby time is working yet because you can't change the slider on that. But you can also change Fahrenheit Celsius. You can set the charging mode to quiet or normal. Uh, quiet will not charge as fast, but it'll be quieter while it's charging. Um, you can set it to auto MPPT or adapter mode for the DC input. You can turn your beeps on and off. I turn mine off because it's annoying as heck. And this is usually where it gives you the option to upgrade the firmware, but I don't see this on this version, so I don't know if they're going to put that back or not. Again, this is a beta version of their app, so I'm sure that things are going to change, but I did test and all this does work. And I just came up with the perfect solution to make the EcoFlow R600 a lot sexier. And there we go. Stickers are available at Hobotech.tv. Give you a quick demo here. See, I turn the light on and off, make it brighter. As for the standby time on this, for whatever reason, it set it back to two hours. Maybe I just didn't set that before. Yeah, see, I keep getting device not responding a lot too. This, this does have some kind of connection issue. Is it gonna let me change the color? No. Okay, there we go. I was able to change it to a breathing. Let's turn up the brightness so you guys can actually see it. So you got that mode. This is uh, the Night Rider mode. If you want to go into Super Pursuit mode. Super Pursuit mode. Right. 
this will give you a seizure. And if you're into rainbows, this is for you. I like mine set on plain old default with a nice comfortable red setting at the lowest brightness. So I don't have to look at it at night and blind myself. But that's just me. That's why they make these settings. You can do it any way you want. Night light will actually leave this light on all the time, even if the display turns off. Let's go over some of the features. Now the base model is just this top part and this battery part you can actually snap on separately. This does have a modular battery system. Here's a closer look at what the external battery looks like. This is the modular battery that gets added to the R600. Now, to my knowledge, you can only add one of these. So how this works is the top half contains a built-in 288 watt hour battery, and then you can add on an additional 288 watt hour battery for a total of 576 watt hours. This is a basic lift ion system with 18650 cells just like their Delta product with a 500 cycle life rated to 80% capacity. That means after 500 full discharge and recharge cycles you can expect to lose 20% of the battery capacity. It doesn't mean it's going to stop working. It doesn't mean you need to throw it away. It just means it loses the top 20% of the battery capacity. Now this device is UL listed in the United States for safety. And I know that's important to a lot of people who are using this indoors or in their RVs. So this is 11 by 10 by 7 inches at 17 pounds. So it's not the lightest, it's not the heaviest. The display on the R600 is state-of-the-art. It's the same display they use on the Delta, and that display is incredible. This is definitely one of the best displays on the market. Shows you input-output watts, shows you time to charge and discharge, shows you what source you're running at, and it gives you this nice little cool circular animation whenever it's charging or discharging. Now the inverter on this is actually very unique and very state-of-the-art. It is a 600 watt pure sign inverter, but it's rated to run 1200 watt appliances. Now, hold on. I'll tell you how this black magic works later on because I figured it out. Now this side sports the solar input, which is an XT60 connector. And that's excellent because that's a high amperage connector that's usually used in the hobby industry. There are three ways to charge the R600 by 12 or 24 volt automotive by solar and by AC outlet. So what about charge times? Now this is one of the fastest charging solar generators you're gonna find on the market. The AC wall outlet will actually charge this thing entirely from dead in 1.6 hours. Solar only takes about three hours and if you wanna charge this from a 12 volt car, it takes about five hours. All three of those numbers are very impressive for a small power station. And as for 12 volt output, you do have the typical 12 volt cigarette lighter socket and two 5.5 millimeter barrel plug sockets below that. This does have a regulated 12 volt output. It's regulated at 13.6 volts. And that means no matter how far the battery is charged or drained, you get 13.6 volts being sent to your refrigerator, CPAP or other appliance that really likes to have that stable voltage. This is the highest voltage I've seen on the market from any power station or solar generator. As for other power outputs, you have an incredible 100 watt power delivery port capable of providing 20 volts at over five amps to your brand new devices. This will actually power directly a MacBook Pro and that's what it's designed. It's designed to actually power high-end laptops directly from DC power so you don't have to use the inverter and waste a lot of the battery. That means pound for pound, size for size, this will actually last longer if you run through the power delivery port than you would a competitor's product where you'd have to use the inverter. It also has one quick charge port and two standard USB-A ports. And on this side, it does have these two parallel ports that allows you to hook up to another R600. Other features, it has an incredibly bright flashlight built in, which I know is one of everyone's favorite features. As for the warranty, this has a class leading 36 month warranty, but this is only available if you get in the Kickstarter today. If you wait and get this retail, the warranty is only 24 months. So that might be enough right there to have a lot of you jump in on this last minute. Now I need to let you guys know because this review came out so late that Kickstarter ends Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific time, which is like 24 hours from now. So if you wanna jump in, now's the time. So of course, I took the pair of R600 Max into my secret laboratory and performed all my crazy hobo experiments on them. You 
EcoFlow R600 Max. Final results, 464.45 watt hours. Now we did this test twice. We did it with just the top part, and then we did it with the whole thing. So that way we can figure out the efficiency of each battery. Now I was kind of surprised at the results. So out of the base, which is just this top part, which has 288 watt hours, we got 255 watt hours out. That's 89%. That's actually pretty good. Now when we hooked up the base to it, which is a total of 576 watt hours, we only got 464 watt hours, which is only 81%. Now I have no idea why the battery in the top part is more efficient than the battery in the bottom part. These numbers are still considered good, but I did expect that the Max to perform better in this category. Let's go ahead and see how many amps we can get out of the sucker. We should be able to pull eight amps without any problem. These little bugs, they're so funny. They just really like me. So five amps, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, well, we expected it would pull at least 10 amps. So you got 12.7 volts at 10 amps, 140 watts out of the cigarette lighter port. That's, that's pretty impressive. But let's keep going. Let's see how high we can go before it conks out. 12 amps at 12.7 volts and it just kicked out. And you see we get the flashy red light. There's no mistaking when you do something wrong. Overload car is blinking on there. As you can see, we were able to pull a whopping 12 amps or 150 watts out of this before it shut down. That's practically class leading for this size. In comparison to Jack, we can only pull 10 amps out of this port. Let's do the pure sine wave test under load and see what the sine wave looks like. Pure sine wave test. Now it's no shocker this has a pure sine wave inverter. In fact, it's probably one of the most state of the art on the market. We're pulling a pure 60 Hertz at 118 and a half volts with no load. Let's go ahead and add a load. And what we're watching for is for the flattening of the tops of the sine wave. We'll know if the inverter is uh, crappy or not, which hopefully it's gonna pass this test. There we go, it still looks perfectly fine. No problems there, it passed the pure sine wave test under load with flying colors. Now for the inverter capacity test, which was pretty tricky because this is a 600 watt inverter rated for 1200 watt appliances. So this is gonna be a little lengthy. First, I'm gonna show you what happened with the original Alpha model, which failed this test. Then we're gonna do the test a second time with this updated model and show you the results of that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I have a brand new Mr. Coffee coffee maker here. I get asked all the time, can I run a coffee machine on like a Delta or a Blue Eddy or a Jackery? And I found out, yes, you can. This little Mr. Coffee coffee maker, which I got for $17 at Walmart, will run just fine on any inverter under 1,000 watts. So we're gonna go ahead and see, will the R600 run the coffee pot. And then also over here, we have Heidi's induction cooktop, and we have some water in a kettle. And we're gonna see exactly how hard we can push this R600. And if that ain't good enough, I got myself a new heat gun. So we're gonna really test this inverter out today and see if we can break it. So let's give it a shot. So let's try running this 650 watt coffee maker on the EcoFlow R600, which claims to run 1200 watt appliances. Look at this, 530 watts. We're getting coffee. It's the weakest coffee you've ever had, but we're getting coffee. The first test we're gonna do is the induction cooker. Now her model has six settings on it. I've already done a little test run on the EcoFlow Delta. This has an 1800 watt pure sign inverter, so it'll run anything. Now remember, this has a 600 watt inverter and they claim it can run 1200 watt appliances. This is a 1200 watt appliance. So let's start on low. It tripped it. Okay, that was interesting, didn't do that before. Remember, this is low, this is well within the parameters of this inverter. Wow, it's not liking it now. I let this thing cool off for a while. I went and took a break, let this thing cool off, and it's now failing the test. 
it's not liking that. Now I ran this before off camera and it worked. I'm starting to wonder what's wrong with this thing. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. Greetings and welcome back. It's been a full month since I've even had my hands on one of these. EcoFlow insisted I send back the old R600 that failed my inverter test because it kept overheating constantly. I got to the point I couldn't even use it anymore. I was expecting to get a pair of these back within a week or two. It took four weeks. So now the Kickstarter is over in three days and somehow I need to finish this video and have it out and published with time left for you guys to make a decision if you want to join the Kickstarter or not. So we have the EcoFlow R600, which claims it, it has a 600 watt inverter. It claims it can power a 1200 watt device. Now this is a 1200 watt cooker. This is an induction, induction stove. I have a teapot on here with some water in it. We're gonna find out for real if the R600, this updated model, the, the beta test only version, that's so ridiculous. The beta test only version, we're gonna check and see, will it power this 1200 watt induction cooker? So let's find out. So it's on. Okay, here we go, we got the inverter on. It's one thing I don't like about the EcoFlow products. They always have their inverter button on the back. You know, I, I like, that's one thing I like about the Jackeries and some of the other ones. The buttons are on the front. You don't have to reach around to the side or try to fiddle and find those buttons. So if you guys remember from the test before, this is one of those induction cookers where depending on which setting that you're on is how much power is gonna be drawn. So we're gonna, just gonna start on medium. There we go, it works. Okay, we're at 600 watts and it keeps resetting. So let's try medium low. Okay, I want you guys to see this. This is supposed to be able to run 600 watt appliances with no problem. As soon as it gets, as soon as it touches 600 watts, you hear a beep and then the induction cooker shuts off and turns back on again. It's giving me an error message. You want to know what's really sad is that the old version of this with the updated firmware actually passed this test. And I was able to run on medium without a problem. Okay, so let's, uh, let's forget about that test. Okay, because everybody wants to know, can you run a coffee maker? Yes, well, I guess we'll find out. I don't know for sure anymore what this thing's gonna do. So we got some, I'm just gonna put just a tiny bit of water in here. We're not gonna make a full pot or nothing, but. Brunel. 594. Okay, so it looks like, so far, this is able to run this little five cup Mr. Coffee. So here comes our boiling water. It's right at 592 watts. Right at it, it's holding steady. My next test is what I call the solar generator destroyer. This has already burned up four lesser power stations. So let's see what happens when we run the R600. Now I'm just gonna use a low setting. You know, that seems to be all it takes. Let's see if we can blow this thing up. Okay, we have no heat. This is no heat on our gun here. Now watch as I turn up the heat. See if, let's see what happens. All right, 500 watts. We're at the capacity of the inverter. It's now dialing it down. It's not letting me cross that 600 watt threshold. Well, let's see what we got here. Now I'm cranking this all the way up. That's the heat gun. This is an 
1800 watt heat gun all the way on maximum. It's pulling 611 watts. Let's see, what kind of voltage are we getting here? It's running at 81 volts. So that's the trick. That's what it's doing. It's undervolting the appliance. So here's no heat, 120 volts coming out of the AC inverter. As I apply heat with the heat gun, the voltage drops to allow it to run a device all the way down to 80 volts. 80 volts. That's crazy. What kind of amps we got in there? So it's still 60 hertz. Okay, so let's watch the amps. I'm guessing the amp probably won't change much. Yep. With no heat, of course the amps are going to drop to zero. But as soon as I apply heat, it hits to that pretty much seven, eight amps, and it won't go anymore. We're running an 1800-watt heat gun, eight amps, because it's running at 80 volts. So there's their secret. So interestingly enough, this has a hard time with that induction cooker, but it totally walloped my 1800-watt heat gun. Now... That was pretty cool to actually dial this all the way up to maximum. Now it's not actually putting out 1800 watts of heat. So what this is doing is this is bringing the voltage down, keeping the amps the same. So it's allowing you to sort of run a higher amp appliance. Now it's only putting out 600 watts of heat. Don't let the marketing hype fool you that this is actually running a 1200 watt appliance. It's really not. It's still running a 600 watt appliance by undervolting it. It lowers the voltage, so only the amount of heat coming out of this is still only 600 watts. So now it's gonna be the big test. I got the parallel cable here, and we're gonna hook both these up in parallel and see if we can really power a 1200 watt appliance. We're starting the heat gun, zero heat, just the motor. And we're gonna watch and see what the screens do. So no heat. We're getting 30 watts on this and 88 on that. I'm not sure why it's uneven. Let's go ahead and increase the heat. 312, 309. So it's getting a little bit closer together. I now have my heat gun on maximum. I have it on the full 1800 watt setting. 544, 550. So out of curiosity, let's go ahead and look and see what the kilowatt meter is doing. 1150 watts combined. Now that's great news that the parallel feature on this finally works. I know Will Prouse had early revision of this and it did not work, but this version works. So I feel confident that if you do buy two of these and hook up in parallel, you can run a 1200 watt device. As you can see, the new beta model performed this test flawlessly. With the exception, it won't run an induction cooker not even on the lowest setting. I have no idea why it has something to do with the way this inverter works. I can't even run it on a two or 400 watt setting without that induction cooker clicking on and off and beeping, which I'm afraid might be damaging it. So I don't wanna test any more with that in this model. But it looks like it runs a heat gun, runs a coffee maker and all the other stuff just fine. So let's do the max charge rate test from the solar port and see how much solar we can pump into this. So 12 volts flat. We're charging at an impressive 120 watts. That means this thing's actually pulling 10 amps. Let's go up to 13.6. Typical voltage while your vehicle's running. It's taking 10 amps, 140 watts. Okay, at 18 volts, it's pulling the full 10 amps, 180 watts, as you can see over there. Let's crank her up to 22, which is the Typical VOC for most solar panels, around the 21, 22 volt range. This is what you can expect from a single solar panel. And we're coming up to 200 watts, 250. Oh, and then it, and it bounces. So there we go, look, 200 watts. So this is where the cutoff happens. It should be able to do 220 watts if it's doing 10 amps. But because there's a hard limit built into the EcoFlow, no matter how much you pump in, you're not gonna get more than 200 watts. Let's try to do, I think this will support 25 volts. 25 volts at 10 amps is only putting in 200 watts. You cannot overvolt this. There's no way to trick the EcoFlow R600 to take more than 200 watts of solar. As you can see, it's a very limited 200 watts. Now that's still pretty good. 
seems to be about the standard for a power station of this size. However, the voltage input on this is quite limiting. It only allows you to use panels from 12 to 25 volts. That means if you want to run more than one solar panel, like say two or three solar panels, you got to run them in parallel. That usually requires a special adapter and you kind of got to know what you're doing. And we perform the usual USB output rate check. This has a 100 watt power delivery port. I had to buy a special product to test this because I usually don't have anything that can pull that kind of power. But let's see how it worked. We're at four amps. Four and a quarter amps, we're at 95 watts already on the power delivery port. We're at five amps, 21 volts, 105 watts according to, or 108 watts according to my meter here. 114 watts out here. I've never seen a USB port put out this much power before. Very impressive, guys. Let's see how hard we can push it until she crashes. 5.3, 5.4, 5.56, 5.7, 5.8, 5.9, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.70, 5.71, 5.72, 5.73, 5.74, 5.75, 5.76, 5.77, 5.78, 5.79, 5.80, 5.81, 5.82, 5.83, 5.84, 5.85, 5.86, 5.87, 5.88, 5.89, 5.90, 5.91, 5.92, 5.93, 5.94, 5.95, 5.96, 5.97, 5.98, 5.99, 5.10, 5.11, 5.12, 5.13, 5.14, 5.15, 5.16, 5.17, 5.18, 5.19, 5.20, 5.21, 5.22, 5.23, 5.24, 5.25, 5.26, 5.27, 5.28, 5.29, 5.30, 5.31, 5.32, 5.33, 5.34, 5.35, 5.36, 5.37, 5.38, 5.39, 5.40, 5.41, 5.42, 5.43, 5.44, 5.45, 5.46, 5.47, 5.48, 5.49, 5.50, 5.51, 5.52, 5.53, 5.54, 5.55, 5.56, 5.57, 5.58, 5.59, 5.60, 5.61, 5.62, 5.63, 5.64, 5.65, 5.66, 5.67, 5.68, 5.69, 5.
And I really think EcoFlow missed the boat on the 200 watt solar charging limit. Now I know the R600 Pro will take 400 watts of solar, but we're talking about their base model here, the R600. It only takes 200 watts of solar, and that doesn't matter if you have the extra battery on it or not. What really hurts is that 25 volt limit. It means you can only use one solar panel to power this unless you want to get a parallel adapter to use more than one solar panel. Now my third and final gripe about the R600 is this modular battery system that they designed. I think it's actually kind of a bit hokey because why would you design your product with modular batteries but have the battery that's built into the base product itself not be able to be changed by the end user? If the battery in the top part dies, malfunctions, or you just use it up, say you have this for five years and you charge and discharge it every single day, the battery in here is gonna be practically dead. However, the battery in the bottom, you can just swap out for another one. How is the BMS and the battery monitor on this gonna handle that situation when the battery up here is shot, but the battery down here is brand new? Your guess is as good as mine. I think their engineers did a great job on the implementation but they didn't really think it through because what they should have done was they should have left the battery out of the top part and just had maybe two batteries available. So you can have a 288 and a 288 stackable for the same amount of size and weight that you have right now, but this would allow it to change the batteries completely in case there was a problem or you wore it out. That means eventually you're gonna be finding these things with dead top batteries and perfectly fine modular batteries on the bottom. I don't think it was very well thought out. Now, why am I complaining about this? Because the retail price of this is gonna be $550. Now you tell me, would you pay $550 for one of these? Leave a comment below. I'm curious. So let's get to the nitty gritty about price. Now, unfortunately this video came out really late. A lot of you watching it probably already bought one of these at the lower Kickstarter price but it's available right now on Kickstarter. The R600 Max as of July 24th at 6 p.m. Still available for $399, which actually is a crazy deal for one of these. And you can still buy two of these and get two of them for 800 bucks. That's a pretty good deal. You can also play the high risk game and get the R600 Pro, which is a lithium iron phosphate version of this with a larger battery. Now, I need to warn you in advance. This is an untested technology. They have not given any of the R600 Pros out to anybody on YouTube to review. It's an unreviewed, untested product. So if you get into the Kickstarter and you buy their lithium iron phosphate pro version, expect to have problems at the beginning because they haven't been tested. These have been beat up by me, Will Prouse, and other YouTubers. They've actually gotten a lot of feedback from us. We've broken these things and sent them back to them. It's given them a chance to fix them, fix the inverters. This had some very serious overheating problems as I showed you before. So they really got to work out the R600 Max version, which is just a basic lithium ion. It's a lot simpler thing to program and deal with internally when it comes to the electronics. A different voltage and everything from lithium iron phosphate. So I just wanna throw that out there. If you wanna roll the dice and you wanna gamble, you can get the R600 Pro. You can get it on Kickstarter. They actually have a two pack, I think, for $9.99, which is like insane. So that would be a really great deal. If these run out before you get the chance to get them, you might wanna go ahead and get the bigger models. You might wanna get these with solar panels. There are bundles on there with solar panels. There's all kinds of different bundles. I'm not even gonna go through them all. Just go to the Kickstarter page, which is linked below. And you can see all the bundles that are still available. So what's the competition for size and features? There, there really isn't any. This is so state-of-the-art and ahead of the game. There's really nobody else out right now putting out anything this size with this amount of features. Uh, the next biggest competitor is gonna be that Blue Eddy AC200, which is gonna be coming out soon. They're gonna be kickstarting in July, and they're pretty much gonna beat the crap out of these guys. But I haven't really got my hands on a working model yet. I did have one, for two days and had some problems. So just wait for that review, that will be coming out pretty soon. This is obviously designed to be a game changer and corner the market like the EcoFlow Delta. 
They promise tons of crazy features at an entry level price. And then when the retail version comes out, they charge you through the nose. Then it becomes much less competitive. At the prices they're asking on the Kickstarter, it's a no brainer. If you jump in on the Kickstarter today and you get these, you're guaranteed to get one because they already got $1.8 million in funding for this product. They've already beat a whole bunch of their stretch goals, including lots of other features, extended warranty, that black version I was talking about. But remember that Kickstarter ends Friday the 26th, so you gotta get in there quickly. So if you're interested in the EcoFlow R600, the link is below in the description. I'm also gonna pin a comment down there. Hit that, it'll take you right to the Kickstarter page where you can go ahead and throw down your pledge. Now, this video is gonna be shown quite a bit after the Kickstarter ends. I don't know how they handle that, if you can still do orders through there or not. Um, once it changes, once I can find out if there's another way to purchase it, I'll go ahead and update the links below in this video. So if you're watching this video in like July or August or even later, I'll just go ahead and update those with whatever method there is to go ahead and buy the R600 at the retail price. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know, know what, what to, to do. do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. Oh yeah, this thing's definitely gross from sitting in the van for the last month. It's got Odin's cat hair all over it. The best part of waking up is Odin in your cup. Army Golf Gun, Z Foxfire.